Hello, I am Tom Lucas, a local musician playing here on Kitsap Peninsula. Welcome to the Bremerton Kitsap Access Television production of Voices, Songwriters of Kitsap Peninsula. Each show will feature a song written by a local songwriter. I will perform the song, and then we will talk with the songwriter. Our song today is called United We Spiral by Jack Parker. This is usually where I would play Jack's song, but after hearing my version, Jack objected to some lyric changes. As a courtesy to Jack, we will not be airing my version of Jack's tune. First, an apology. I should have been more clear about the show and how I approach performing a song. While learning a tune, I fit it to my playing and singing style. As part of that process, changes happen. The key, tempo, and occasionally a lyrical phrase. All these things morph through repetition. So Jack, I should have been more clear about that up front. I also wanted to thank Jack. This issue was bound to come up sooner or later, and here we are. What are we doing here on Voices Songwriters of Kitsap Peninsula? This show is about honoring local songwriters with attention to their work, not duplication of it. Each episode is 15 minutes long, in the first three minutes, I play a version of the song we are highlighting. The remainder of the show is dedicated to the songwriter with an interview and finishes with the original recording of the songwriter's tune. The hope is to bring attention to their work and direct people to their shows and media sites. To all the songwriters who work and or play here on Peninsula, get in touch with me and let's get your music on the show. I promise you my best effort to make sure you and your work are respected and presented well. Please listen to our other shows with Ty Brillhart, Studebaker Clark Snyder, and Mike Davison. Listen to both versions and let's discuss, debate, and have some fun. It's all in there. Here now my interview with Jack Parker, songwriter, musician, teacher, and performer, and a nice guy as well. Right after the interview, hear the original recorded version of United We Spiral. On first listen to your tune, um, I knew it was a tune I wanted to do. I, I actually did it in drop D. I, you may have noticed that. Mm -hmm. uh, the phrasing, the lyrics, uh, just it was just a fun tune to learn. And uh, so I know how the song inspired me. And what, what was your inspiration for the song? Well, kind of a number of things. Uh, I first started writing the song in early, like spring of 2020. So we kind of all remember what was going on in the spring of 2020. Um, it was really, it was, it was April. So, I mean, everything with COVID was very, very new sure. and fresh. Uh, and there was a lot of uncertainty going on in the world. Um, and that was really the kind of the, the inspiration for the lyrical content of the song. Um, also, I, I, this is like a little bit of a side note, but I had also just recently lost a, a, my dog had actually passed away very recently. And so I was feeling very down and sad. And, uh, and that very day that that happened is when I started writing the song. Okay. Um, and the, the, the music of the song is kind of coincides with the lyrics and a, a little bit of a darker sound and just, just kind of how I was feeling that day. Yeah, I, I mean, I felt that when I was learning the tune that some of the intervals, the way the whole thing went. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of grabbed onto that and get, ran with it because of that. That was, that was nice. Mm -hmm. um, the album is Through the Darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, you worked with local musicians uh, and recorded most of that album in your own studio. That's correct. Okay, homegrown recording. Yeah. Okay, where where you where's that located? Well, so I've actually it was it's in been in my home and I've actually moved a couple of times since then. Uh, so it's just it's followed me basically wherever I am. Uh, I'm now in Bremerton again, so it's it's located in my home in Bremerton. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've done some uh, live uh, uh, studio work at Daniel Rimbert over on uh, Calo, yeah. no? Yes, Rimbert Illustration. Uh, I've been doing live sound there for our, our monthly music performances there. Uh, and I've, I recorded the sets uh, for the first two years that we had music in there. And I recorded and mixed, um, I think, three or four different albums have been released from those sessions. Okay, sure. Um, so that's, that was a lot of fun, too. 
Right. Is that is that Bremerton First Friday when you guys be there? Uh, no, actually. So when we first started that, we were we were trying to be a little bit different and do something on a night that wasn't competing with other things going on in town. So we were doing it on Mondays. Uh, we were doing it on a third Monday of the month at first. Uh, and then over the past few months, we decided to maybe try something a little different. So we've shifted it to third Fridays now. So we're typically on third Fridays. Third Fridays. Yeah. Okay. But we're still doing it early. So we're not competing with the Charleston because we don't want to compete with other shows that are going on. Um, but yeah, so far they've, they've been really successful and, and a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, most musicians need to have a day job. Is music full or part time for you? Well, I guess technically you could say it's full in that my day job is teaching. So I teach guitar um, and I have about 20 guitar students currently. Um, so that's really, that's how I make most of my living with the addition of playing shows and also, you know, working out of my studio and producing for other artists. Um, so it's a little combination of, of a lot of things, but it's all based around music. Absolutely terrific. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, it, my life is a lot of music now too, but uh, I, I'm retired, so mm -hmm. that's you know I get up in the morning and practice uh, or play. So. That's a nice way to live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so playing out, um, obviously uh, as a teacher, that's that's going to provide you with some income. Mm -hmm. But um, how important is playing out? How often do you guys play out? Um, it's it's still fairly important, and I I do it because I love doing it. Um, but also it it is. I mean, I still feel like it's the best way to uh, expose your music to people that have not heard you before is by playing live. Um, and that to me is the most, um, you know, connective way to, you know, engage with people and to get music is through the live music experience. Uh, I love recording too, and obviously love listening to albums, but like I, there's just no comparison to the live music experience. So yeah, there's, there's no substitute for live. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, okay, the music industry has changed dramatically uh, with streaming and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and, and making it as a musician these days, I'm not even sure how that's defined, but what, what would that look like for you? I mean, what would be the next level for you if, if uh, things were going your way successfully? That's a good question. Um, Obviously, for me, I think it's just growing my fan base. Okay, um, so larger venues, maybe? With, yeah. uh, maybe larger audiences. Larger audiences <laughs> okay. Yeah, before the larger venue, you want to start seeing larger audiences, of course. Yeah. Um, and I do have a decent little following around here in Kitsap and, sure. and in other places that I, I have done a fair amount of touring over the years, too. Oh, you so, have? Okay. Yeah, I'm actually doing another one this year. So um, trying to get, get that rolling a little bit more and just, you know, just feeling like I have something to say with my songs and, and just, I believe in what I'm saying. And so I'm just trying to reach more people really is, is the goal. And obviously making that sustainable as far as, you know, paying the bills too is important. Sure. Uh, but teaching has been a really great way to n not feel pressured to have to play gigs as often mm -hmm. uh, because I can still always come home and, and teach. And I have got a really good group of students to, to, to showcase too, so. Okay, well, I got one more question for you. It's it's the last question we always ask, mm -hmm. and that is, musicians end up in, in some really strange situations. Uh, so, for you, what is the craziest thing that's happened to you at a show or really anywhere when you're performing? I guess I would probably have to go back to, uh, quite a few years ago, I was, um, I was playing guitar in uh, the local punk band MXBX for a few years. And we did quite a bit of international touring. And uh, in 2011, we did a South America tour. And uh, it was very memorable. Um, all the shows were very memorable, but one in particular I remember was um, uh, security down there at shows is, is not quite what it is here in the States. And uh, there were, after one show that we had played, uh, the fans down there are extremely exuberant and very, very excited that we're there. Um, and it was after a show, we had to get the whole band and the crew from the venue outside to the tour bus that we were on. And there was no security out there. And all of the fans that were at the show were out there waiting for us. Really? And okay. so we had to literally push our way through 
a lot of very exuberant fans getting ourselves to the bus and uh, you know, got each one of us on the bus one by one and we're looking around to make sure we have everybody. And then by the time we got everybody on there and we're ready to pull out, you know, pull out of the parking lot, uh, the fans are literally, you know, banging on the windows like, hey, you know, you know. I can see it in my head. And it really for me as a, like a guy who has just played a lot of local stuff over the years and just not used to that kind of thing, it really felt like a Beatles kind of a moment for me. Uh, it was very bizarre for me to experience that, but very memorable too at the same time. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming out and talking with us today. I appreciate it very much. As we sign off, we'll be playing the album recording of Jack singing United We Spiral from his album Through the Darkness. Please take note of the information on the screen, which will direct you to their album and their local shows right here in Kitsap. The goal of our show is to encourage folks to get out and see these local bands in the venues that hire and support local music. Live music is connection. Come on out and connect with us and each other. Here it is, United We Spiral, recorded by Jack Parker from his album, Through the Darkness. Thank you.